Hi to everyone and welcome to this SSP webinar. Okay, right now I'd like to introduce today's presenter. He's the Business Development Manager at Specialty Silicon Products Incorporated, Dominic Testo. Dominic has been an SSP employee for nine years. He has spent his entire tenure at the company establishing SSP as a leader in developing new solutions for the EMI RFI shielding elastomers market. He's a proven networker throughout the entire supply chain, and Dominic is responsible for the growth of this strategic product line. So, Dominic, thanks for being here today. I'm going to pass things over to you right now to get us started. So, go right ahead. Hello, everybody. My name is Dominic Testo from Specialty Silicone Products. On behalf of everyone here at SSP, we would like to welcome you to our webinar today EMI RFI Gasketing Outside the Box Solutions to Protect What's in the Box. We would also like to thank you. In a world where everyone is trying to do more with less time, we sincerely appreciate you taking 30 minutes out of your day to learn more about our EMI RFI elastomer solutions. We are confident it will be well worth your time. So thank you again, and let's get started. Before we get into the thick of it, let's discuss quick what we're going to talk about today. We're first going to give you a brief introduction on SSP, not just who we are, but why we believe we're the experts and thought leaders in conductive shielding elastomer. Quickly after that, we're going to move into the meat of the presentation. Let's face it, this industry hasn't had innovation in a very long time. We're going to discuss why that is. We're going to discuss the main problems that engineers have seen over the years. And then we're going to, of course, discuss the solutions that SSP has developed. Let's get going. So who is SSP? What's our story? Let me share it with you. In 1989, four employees at GE Silicones left their jobs. They left their really good jobs at that. And the reason they were so confident in doing so is because they were silicone formulation experts, experts in the chemistry, the manufacturing, and everything there was to know about silicone at the time. They knew there were so many unmet markets out there, underserved, just waiting for somebody like SSP to come in and help. One of these materials was, of course, EMI RFI shielding. In the early days, we mostly made offsets, the Me Too products, but things changed. Today, we're over 70 employees. If you look to the right, you can see the 54,000 square foot facility we manufacture out of in upstate New York. Everything is made in the USA. High cost. This is the first problem we're going to talk about today. But before we get into this, let's talk about where this cost came from in the first place. There was a point that the military needed a specialized environmental seal that also had excellent shielding properties from electromagnetic interference. How did the market solve this problem? They loaded silver and silver-coated products into elastomers like silicone, EPDM, and fluorosilicone, essentially taking these standard sealing materials that are natural insulators and turning them into good conductors and shield. At the time, silver was the available technology, and the solution worked. Take a look at the chart below showing the market price for silver in the late 80s. It was around $6 an ounce. Although expensive and still precious metal, it got the job done, and it wasn't too much for the market fare. Not long after that, MIL G83528 was created. This was a MIL spec designed around these materials. It's now known as MIL DTL83528. Silver fillers dominated all aspects of this MIL spec, and before you knew it, they were on 95% of the drawing. Now let's fast forward to 2011 and 2012 time period. Look at the chart. Silver was now eight times more expensive than it was in the late 80s. This was an issue. A gasket that used to be $40 is now $300. This, along with outdated manufacturing processes, motivated the industry to come up with a lower cost solution, with no impact on performance and shielding, of course. This is where SSP comes in. So here's what we were thinking. If silver's driving up the cost, let's get rid of it. Let's find a lower cost and less volatile particle. At the end of the day, we chose nickel-coated graphite. What we couldn't do is give up shielding effectively. If you look at the charts below, you'll see a frequency range on the left-hand columns. It's 20 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. This is the range for silver-plated aluminum-filled products. Dictated by the MIL DTL83528 specification we talked to prior, and the spec that drives the industry, the min dB you are able to achieve is 100 for silver-coated products. So that's our goal, to make a nickel-coated graphite product that shields over 100 dB at the given range. SSP's team went to work, and after intense R&D, we achieved this goal. The chart you see below, shows both our nickel graphite and our silver aluminum achieving over 100 dB across that range. This is third-party data, and not data from just any lab. This is the QPL approved lab for the 83528 specification. SSP now had a lower cost and less volatile solution without giving up performance in the field. 
let's take a look at a case study. As powerful as that data was that I just shared, there's always hesitation when moving away from a long-time mill spec. It's what everyone knows. It's what everyone's comfortable with. And hey, if I'm the engineer on this project, it'd be hard for me to sign my name to something to make a major change, especially in a weapons program. But they were over budget and silver prices peaked. Even though the gas wasn't the most expensive part on this assembly by far, it was still very expensive and much more expensive than they specified four years ago. The engineers took a look at the data we used. Because it was third-party trusted data from the lab that tests the mill DTL83528 in the first place, they finally agreed and they specified our product. The change was made and it helped them save 50% on this particular part. After these engineers got used to using our product and were trusted with the data, they came back to SSP many times again. This was letting us know that the market was changing. The nickel coated graphite materials would soon be on the table for all military applications in the future. Finally, we move on to problem number two, compression molding. The main issue here is the manufacturing methods historically used for conductive elastomers. Take a look at the left. It's a large heated flattened compression molding press. This material has been molded in this product for a very long time but it comes with a laundry list of issues. First, there's a lot of dimensional restrictions. You can only cut a gasket out of the size of the sheet that's allowed. The mold and the press dictate how large of a sheet you can make. The largest known in the industry is 30 by 30 inches. Anything over that would have to be spliced together. That brings a lot of risk to the material itself, especially in application when you risk RFI, EMI, leak pack. Next, compression molding is laborious. It takes a very long time, and that drives up cost and drives out lead time. Finally, it's very hard to optimize. Since you only have standard sheets to work with, your gasket usually comes with bad yields, especially when you can only get one or two per sheet. Again, driving up cost. So what did SSP do? We took out the compression molding process as a whole, and we started making continuous rolls. This is a slide that me and my colleague are excited and proud to talk about. This type of technology is innovative and game-changing. No one else in the industry is producing materials like this. All these problems we talked about in the last slide with compression molding are now taken away. We reduced lead time by 70 to 80%. That's a very, very, very big improvement. Nobody wants to wait for their gaskets holding up a large program, especially when it's a million or $2 million device getting held up by a $100 gasket. Also, this allows us to make custom lengths and thicknesses. We're no longer at the mercy of our mold. If your sheet can only come in 15 by 20, but your gasket needs to be 21 inches long, you're going to have problems. But we're going to talk about the next few slides on how we can help with that. We can improve yields by optimizing the dimensions, also something we're going to show you in the next few slides. More importantly, technically, this has the potential to get rid of splicing. Splicing and bonding gaskets, that brings a lot of questions into play. Is the adhesive used to splice the gasket conductive? Is the shielding effectiveness the same as the silicone? Can it handle the temperature range? Is it going to break in the field, causing environmental or EMI RFI leaks? There's a lot of questions there, but we solve all those problems. Roll material produced with tighter thickness tolerances is a big deal. If you have a 0.020 sheet, which is common in the industry, and your thickness tolerance is plus or minus 0.05 or 5 thousandths, the engineer designing is going to have a hard time designing their housing. 25% plus or minus. That's just too much, so we fixed it. Come with me on the next few slides. I'm gonna show you some exciting stuff. Okay, let's give a visual. Remember I was talking about one of the main problems, splicing sheets together to get one large gasket? Take a look. What we're trying to accomplish is the 60 inch long gasket. This could happen on a panel, a radar, or any device that's bigger than a standard 20 inch sheet that's molded in the industry. Look at the top piece. You'll see four black splices, two on the top, two on the bottom. Remember all those questions I was asking? That's what engineers are gonna ask you. Hey, what is this material made out of? What are you splicing with? Is the temperature range the same? Is the shielding the same? Is it gonna stay together? How about the tensile strength? Is it gonna break? Is EMI gonna get through? Is water gonna get through? We'll be very nervous about specifying this type of material. If you do use the same exact material you made out of the sheet to splice the gasket together, very laborious going to drive cost up, and this is going to be a very expensive gasket. If it's made out of silver aluminum especially, a 60-inch long gasket by 15 inches wide wouldn't be out of the question to be close to $1,200 to $1,500. So 
But let's take a look at SSP solution using our roll stock. Take a look below at the gray material. All we've done is make a 15 inch wide roll and the fabricator or SSP has cut out a gasket that's 60 inches long. All those worries are now gone. It's all cut out of one piece. It's all using the same material and you don't have to worry about the shielding effectiveness or environmental leak paths during the splicing. Okay, so we're gonna keep talking about continuous rolls and how they improve the process. In particular on this slide, we're gonna talk about yield. Take a look at the picture on the left. The gasket needed is 21 inches long. Out of a standard 15 by 20 sheet, you can barely squeeze it out. You need to go diagonal, and it's the only gasket you'll get out of the sheet. If you need 200 of these gaskets, you're gonna to need to mold 200 sheets. Remember compression molding? It's gonna take a very long time. It's also gonna be expensive, and when you have all this yield loss, the gasket's gonna be so much more in price than it was when you originally designed it that you're gonna to have to look elsewhere. A solution, look below. Here's our continuous roll process. A 13.25 inch wide roll at 85.25 inches long in this particular case would yield 16 of these gaskets, 85% reduction in waste. This is an amazing showing of how our rolls can take out yield and cost along with lead time. Galvanic corrosion, this is the next problem we're going to talk about. Corrosion has been a well-known issue with conductive elastomers that has been causing engineers, OEMs, and the military a problem for a very long time. The particle substrate in the conductive filler, along with the usual silver coating on that particle, causes reactions when pressed against the steel and aluminum enclosures they're designed to protect in the first place. As corrosion eats away at the enclosure, a gap can form in between the gasket and the metal. This will allow both water dust, other environmental problems to come through. It'll also allow radio frequency to come in. This is a major issue. This is especially worrisome in marine environments where salt fog and salt exposure is continual. Okay, so now that we explained both where corrosion comes from and what the risks are, let's talk about the more important part, solution. Take a look at the picture to the right. You'll see some thicker aluminum washers compressing an EMI gasket. This is a standard ASTM method for salt spray and salt fog. The material is exposed to the elements under compression for 168 hours. Once complete, we measure the weight loss percentage of the aluminum washers. The aluminum represents the enclosure. And note we find that 50% less corrosion exists when using the nickel-coated aluminum versus a treated silver-coated aluminum, previously the best choice for corrosion resistance in the industry. We believe nickel-coated aluminum, both silicone and fluorosilicone, to be the most corrosion-resistant product on the market. So please consider these, especially when you're working on marine environment application. Brittleness and low tear resistance. Remember these materials are made by loading high percentages of metal into elastomers, making them conductive, but at the same time having negative impacts on all the standard elastomer properties, especially tear strength, suffers greatly. Tears are especially prevalent in thin wall gaskets due to die cutting small through holes on connectors and other designs. Again, you're risking environmental seal and shielding issues if you have this tear in your gasket. On the manufacturing end, the risk of waste and driving up cost is high. It's very easy to tear a small through hole, especially when cutting with steel wheel dies and water jets. The original gasket design is unmanufacturable. When you need to change the enclosure design late in the game, you'll face major delays and cost increases, all because of a gasket. At this point in the presentation, you know what comes after the problem. You guessed it. The SSP solution. The product I'm about to tell you about is by far my favorite SSP innovation personally. We call it ArmorFi. It's made up of three separate layers conductive silicone on the top and bottom, and a conductive fabric reinforcing the elastomer in the middle. Take a look at the picture below. In order to give you some insight into the composite makeup, we completed only half the manufacturing process for the sake of the presentation. On the rolled up portions, you see a shiny fabric. In the middle part, laying flat, you can see some conductive silicone. When the product is complete, you would only see the silicone on both sides. Okay, so get to the point, right? Why did we do this? The answer is structural integrity. No longer are thin wall gaskets and small through holes an issue. The brittleness problem is solved. And even though we overcame the tearing issue, that's not the only added bonus. When talking about ArmorFi, it's also made in continuous rolls, carrying all the advantages of our solutions when overcoming compression molding processes. This is the strongest shielding elastomer in the industry, and we really hope you consider it on future design. Okay, 
So we're now on to yet another major issue. By now, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, these products sure do have a lot of problems. But yet again, this is an issue caused by the needed chemistry to achieve both sealing and shielding. The problem is that they're very firm and hard. The typical product in the MIL DTL83528 specification falls around 65 to 75. This is the durometer on the Shore A scale. Yet another negative outcome due to high filler loading. Take a look at the picture to your left showing a reading of 70, comparable to most car tires. These harder gaskets require from 10 to 20% in order to seal and shield like originally intended. That 10 to 20% is a compression belt. Like everywhere, projects are looking to save on cost. And sometimes they choose to use low quality housing like cast versus machine. Since engineers underestimate the force needed to compare, they run into issues when an uneven enclosure doesn't allow for a good seal. Our solution to the gasket hardness and stiffness problems go way back to our GE roots and our formulation know-how. We're able to remove enough conductive particle, yet keep conductivity over the minimum values called out in the 83528 specification we keep referencing. Those were originally designed for high-loaded silver products. This is no easy task and took years of research and development before we could perfect it. We now offer and make it much easier to adapt to low cost or uneven enclosures, saving on time, and more importantly, saving on cost on potential redesign. Take a look at the left. That picture shows our product reading around a 40 durometer, comparable to a pencil eraser. This is a long way from a car tire. Lastly, by combining our lower duro material with ArmorFi, our reinforced product I shared a few slides ago, you end up with a very strong product with flexibility based on the softness on lower cost housing. Yet another industry-wide problem solved by the team here at SSP. So we're closing in on the end of the presentation, but while we have your attention and before we let you go, we wanted to show you a few other solutions we have in EMI RFI elastomers. To talk in more detail about this, please contact SSP directly. We make extruded product, we take that extruded product and we also bond it into O-rings. Far top corner on the right, you'll see those bonded O-rings. We can also mold O-rings, produce conductive RTV adhesive, produce molded picture frames, a great cost saving option when volumes are high, and we make custom molded parts. So please keep us in mind for all these EMI RFI solutions. The last 20 minutes was a lot of technical data, a lot to digest. So let's summarize. This is what SSP would like you to take away from the presentation you just watched. SSP is an experienced formulation company, allowing us to do many things and solve many problems within the elastomer world, especially EMI RFI shielding. We listen to the market, and we develop materials to the common problems. We're customer focused. Whether your needs are softer, faster, stronger, more environmentally stable, or cost reduction, we've developed products that help. If a more custom solution is needed, we can help with that too. We are a customer focused company that delivers silicones that work with speed flexibility, and service. Thank you once again for your time today. For those of you watching live, we're going to move to a Q&A. For those of you watching on a downloaded version, please contact SSP directly. We'd be happy to help with your EMI solution. Great. Thanks so much. And now we will move into the live Q&A session of this webinar. I would like to encourage everyone who is listening who has any questions, please make sure to submit them so that we can get them addressed for you live now. So our first question, what's your preferred method for cutting the material? Okay, so it's a good question. Uh, steel rule die cutting uh, has been around for a long time. Um, the one advantage to something like a water jet or a knife cutter is that it's toolless die cutting. So in the prototype stage, we recommend water jet uh, and knife cutting, and then on volume, it's easier to automate sometimes on steel rule dies. Okay, and our next question, do you have any EMI gasket material that would be considered low outgassing? We do. Uh, a while back, we had some satellite applications that required uh, passing ASTM 595-07. Uh, we developed it with nickel-coated graphite material, uh, and there is a secondary step after we make the material to get it in line with the ASTM 595. Okay. And moving on, is it possible to have a custom elastomer developed by SSP? 
Yes, it's one of the things that we pride ourselves on. As you saw in the presentation, there was a lot of talk about our roots back to the beginning when we were, um, our owners were, you know, leaving GE Silicone. So uh, we have a lot of credibility there formulation-wise, and we would like to take those projects on as much as possible. If we have a custom part, does FFP make the tooling in-house or subcontract to machine shops? That's a good question. Uh, we make most of our custom gasket material and sheet stock molds in-house. Uh, this helps us control cost and lead time. Uh, many times we can improve lead time by three and four weeks on projects due to our in-house capability on extruded profiles. Uh, many times we outsource that business uh, and we do not do that in-house. Okay. Um, and this next attendee asks, have you seen shielding elastomer applications used to protect the new 5G network infrastructure? Another very good question. Uh, quick Google search on the 5G infrastructure. Uh, you'll see that there are a lot of people, including the manufacturers, worried about the emissions. Uh, we've seen two or three applications that are in test now. Uh, we continue to see uh, 5G infrastructure uh, applications. Very good question. Great. Okay. And our next question, the innovations are really great, but what if we have projects that need standard mill DTL83528 silver aluminum and fluorosilicon like type B and type D? Yes, so SSP uh, not only has all the innovative things we showed, uh, but we're also listed by the Defense Logistic Agency on the mill DTL83528 for type B and type D. Those are silver plated aluminum and silicone and fluorosilicone. Uh, and we have three other versions of that specification in test now, uh, hoping to launch in 2019. Great, okay. Um, and it looks like this may be our last question unless we get any additional ones. How does the continuous roll solution not have a slice or is it an overlap? So the continuous roll uh, is good when you have a gasket that might be, and the example we used was, I believe, 60 inches long. Uh, since we do not have to work to the mold sizes, we can make that continuous and cut the full gasket out of the roll so it's all one piece. Great. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up right there. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day.